All right, time for another video. Uh, this one, I kind of want to tackle some more physiology. So, I mean, you know, in a nutshell, I mean, like, if you could put this thing together in, like, two or three minutes and explain exactly what's happening in the male reproductive tract when creating semen. All right, glad you asked. So let's get started. All right, so we know that spermatogenesis is occurring here in the, uh, in the testes. Uh, we know that FSH was released from the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. It then travels to the testes, and then it comes into contact with the seminiferous tubules. Ultimately, we have spermatogenesis taking place, which remember, we wound up having five levels of spermatogenesis. Um, the last level, of course, is spermiogenesis, which is when we finally see the sperm become um, structurally and physically mature. Now, remember, these sperm cells can't get anybody pregnant yet. Uh, however, they do finally now look like sperm cells. So the spermatozoa make their way uh, through ducts from the testes uh, and, most importantly, the seminiferous tubules into the epididymis, which we see here. Now, of course, they enter in through the head. Uh, they're temporar temporarily stored in the body and then ultimately released through the tail. Now, there are about three different things that the epididymis happens to do, but primarily one of the primary things that the epididymis does is it leads to functional maturation of the sperm cells. So then those sperm cells uh, leave the tail. They ride through the ductus deferens or the vas deferens. Uh, they're inside the spermatic cord here. That tube, the ductus deferens or the vas deferens, then passes over the urinary bladder and then kind of goes behind the urinary bladder where it forms what we call the ampulla. Now, if we move this part of the model, you'll see where the ductus deferens comes in, and then we see where the ampulla is created. Now, you can't see this now that I've done what I've done, but you need to understand this. It's at this point at the ampulla that the sperm cells that have been created are now mixed in with the secretions of the seminal glands. Now, the seminal glands are releasing a whole lot of different things to add to the sperm to finally create semen. The seminal glands are adding fructose. They're adding prostaglandins. Uh, they're, adding they're adding fibrinogen. So all of these things are being mixed together here in the ampulla, and then everything now releases through what's known as the ejaculatory duct. So let's put on some light here. So now we look through, and we can see where it releases through the ejaculatory duct and into the urethra, where it just actually passed through another structure known as the prostate now, the prostate gland is responsible for releasing his secretions, and that's added in, and we now see a mixture take place uh, along with what we had originally from the ampulla. This area is now known as the prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra then passes through this area where we see uh, a membrane of skeletal muscle, which commonly gets referred to as the membranous urethra, and then ultimately to this area, which unfortunately this model covers up, where we cannot see it, but there is a pair of other glands known as the bulbourethral glands. Um, that urethra that passes across that membrane is known as the membranous urethra. It then gets a mixture of secretions from the bulbourethral gland, and then it passes into the urethra that's here in the penile shaft, which is known as spongy urethra, and then out through the external urethral orifice.